Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome once again to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon, ching, 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 for notification of up and coming videos. Today we're going to be talking about catching croc cooter. Um, yeah, so with no further ado, let me start. I'll just put these aside. I'm going to do one with chartreuse to show you. Okay, let me just grab some pliers. Okay, so what I'm going to use to make my trace is basically these items here. You require round nose pliers. You can use a big hook or a six inch nail. A pair of side cutters. And obviously a pair of mustard scissors to cut the fluorocarbon. So to start off with, I'm just gonna get my chin weight. I'm also gonna just grab a Walla Walla to show you what they look like first of all and to get my sizing right. As you can see guys, for those of, it, of you that are not sure what a Walla Walla is, <laughs> that's a Walla Walla. Okay, so very simply, that's what a Walla Walla looks like. Um, I'm just going to grab my wire here quickly. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of size 5 wire, American fishing wire. And I'm going to measure off about 30 centimeters. Give it a cut. So there we go. I've got 30 centimeters of size 5 American fishing wire. That's the first part. That's going to be the nose piece. Why the size 5 rather than the size 7? It's a lot thinner. It's not an area that the cooter is really going to attack. And because it's thinner, it's less obvious for the fish to see. It's as simple as that. I'm now going to take a swivel. I'm actually going to get two swivels out. So take out two size four power swivels. Round those pliers. And I'm going to do a haywire twist. At the back of the American fishing wire, there's a description on how to do it as well. So, okay, so here we go. We're gonna make a haywire twist, we're gonna bend it in like so. Take our power swivel through, grab it, and all we're gonna do is just keep it at 45 degrees and we're just gonna keep on twisting. Two, three, four, five, six times. Bring the tag end up so it's 90 degrees to the actual wire. So it's 90 degrees to the wire and then I'm just going to wrap it around six times as well. One, two, three, four, five, six times. And then to bend it off, all we do is we take the tag end, pull it towards you and you go anti-clockwise and that will break it off perfectly straight. Okay, so there's step one. So there's our high wire twist with the swivel done. I'm now going to take my chartreuse kingfisher duster. Like so. So there he is. I'm now going to thread the wire through the front of it, all the way down. I'm now going to make another haywire twist. Okay, break it off again, just bend the wire towards you and go anti-clockwise. So there's the haywire twist done. Just make sure it's nice and straight. There's a haywire twist. There's my 
chartreuse cooter duster on it. I'm just going to leave that there for a second. I'm going to start the next process. And the next process is basically measuring out where we want the treble hooks to be. So for instance on this, the first treble should just be behind um, the head. So first treble there, one, two, three. Okay. So here we go. Three trebles. We use the number seven wire. The reason we use the number seven wire, this is the area that the cooter is going to grab. You want the strongest wire in the center that he can't bite off. The thinnest wire in the front is just there, just in case he shakes his head and he might just bite the wire, but it's there just as a protection. Okay, so here we go. Again, just take 20 to 30 centimeters, cut it once, and you just grab three pieces exactly the same length. Okay, so these three pieces perfectly cut. I'm just going to pack it away. This is American fishing wire size 7. Okay, I'm going to put that away because I don't need it anymore. Okay, so we take our wire. Take our trebles, and again, this is a small waller. If the waller waller walla was slightly longer, you'd put four trebles. So literally spacing off. Yeah, ten to twelve centimeters apart is what your spacing needs to be. So every twelve centimeters along your walla you just put a treble hook okay so bigger walla more trebles smaller walla like this nice walla three trebles here we go okay so step one is to take your wire through and you'll always see there's a welding on your actual um, treble hook try and keep that welded part on the top side of it Weld apart on the top side. So that is going to be literally the spacing that I'm going to have for that size walla walla. Okay, guys. So let's tight. Go through the walla. It's, this is pretty much what they call a stiff rig that I'm doing for, for this particular walla. So we're going to take that. Wrap it around once, twice, and on the third time that you're wrapping it around, go through the back in the opposite direction. Pull it out, and bring it across. Okay. So here we go. And then all we're doing is taking this tag end and wrapping the tag end around six times. Three, four, five, six times. And again, all we're going to do is take that there and go anti-clockwise to break it off. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to just leave it there. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the next one. Now, what we're going to do is create a um, loop on it and I'll show you it's a haywire twist. Okay, so now to make the hay wire twist, all we're going to do is take our treble from behind and we're going to make a hay wire twist. Okay, so that is the back hook. When you do it, remember the welded part is this way. That loop or the eye needs to be bent so that it actually faces towards me, so I'm just going to grab it quickly. And this is just a little trick to tweak your, your trace. So you take it there, just give it a little bit more of a bend on it so it comes up and around. So now you'll see 
that where the welding is, is now in line with the loop, or the loop is around. And then what we do, take our pliers, and we just bend it ever so slightly up, 30 degrees up. Okay, so there it is there. So it's bent ever so slightly up. We're going to take our second one. We're going to stick it through. Okay, let's get it this way. Take our second one, stick it through. So it lies next to it. Okay. Welding of the hook pretty much faces up. And again, we just measure off the same distance. Like that. And we do a wire twist once again. And again, just have a look where the welding is. The welding's on top. That one is pretty much where I want it to be from the beginning. So I'm just going to take it up slightly. There we go. So again, what we've got is we've got the welding that way. We've got the welding over there. Third one. Again, we're just going to slide him through. Place him where we want him to sit on the waller, like so. And just make sure there's enough movement on either side. And measure it up to come in line with this. So when we've got him there, that is exactly where I want my um, haywire twist to finish on it. So it sits in that aisle of that hook perfectly. So I've got my distance that I'm looking for. That's where I want it to be. Go again quickly, just stick him up there and grab him. There we go. And again, all we're going to do, haywire twist. When the hook is manufactured, they round the hook off. They round the hook off. And they can always be, in any hook, any manufacturing process, that could be open. Okay. So you, what you want is you don't want your wire to slip through there when it swims off of the cooter. Okay. So make sure you go through the wire and the eye of the hook at the same time. So this wire that's attached here also stops the whole thing from coming loose or coming out. Okay, very important. Okay, so we take that, grab him like so. There is our completed trace made for a waller of this particular side. Now you ask, why the movement? The reason we do that and we don't fix it is because with the waller in the water is actually moving like this when you're actually pulling it on a ski, on a ski boat, on a jet ski. It's actually swimming. So you need this movement backwards and forwards on your bait. If you kept it straight, it would look dead straight. It does not look natural in the water. And that's very important. We're trying to make this bait look as natural as possible in the water. Okay. Natural swimming action is pretty much like that. Snaking action. So we're trying to do that. Okay. So <clears throat> to put the whole thing together, I'm going to bring this closer. Just going to quickly take all these things away. And then I'm going to attach our fluorocarbon to it. I just want to throw this little bits of wire away quickly, guys. Okay. <clears throat> now what we do is we take our 70 pound FC fluorocarbon. It's a Sunline product. And this stuff is absolutely brilliant for tying cuda traces. It might be a bit thick, but it's invisible in the water. So thickness doesn't really matter. We're going to take pretty much a meter and a half. You can make it longer if you want, but a meter and a half is more than enough. Remember your length of your rod. You don't want the swivel going through your eye of your rod when you're fighting the fish. Okay. So you wind up to the swivel and you just literally 
tussle the fish all the way around. Okay, so what we do is take our number four power swivel, our 70 pound fluorocarbon, and we tie a figure of eight. And remember, if you don't know how to tie a figure of eight, top right hand side corner of the screen. There we go. Three times around, open it up to form a figure of eight. Slide, pull down. It's as easy as that, guys. Take your pliers, side cutters, whatever it is. There's the figure of eight complete. We're then going to take it and attach it to our trace. There we go. One, two, three. Open it up. A little bit of lubrication. Pull the knot tight and you can see I'm sliding it down. I'm not pulling it, I'm sliding it down. That way you keep it nice and straight. Cut it off nice and neatly. Okay, so there is our completed cooter trace, guys. Now, <clears throat> the best way to put it on and Michael, yes, you can walk behind me. Don't worry. No, because you can walk. Don't worry. You don't mind. It's actually like I've seen you doing some work. People can actually see. <laughs> okay. So what we do, another very important thing. Before you go fishing for kuta, before you put the hooks in, <clears throat> these little devils have got some nasty, nasty teeth. And trust me, if you go out catching Walla Walla, you end up looking like this because of those teeth there. They absolutely are horrific. So another little trick is to actually take your pliers and actually cut these teeth down. Just cut them with a pair of pliers down. There's nothing worse than being bitten by a Walla's teeth and bleeding all day. I think they're actually worse than Kuta. So we just take it Cut those little teeth down a little bit for two reasons. One is when you're rigging it up, you don't get cut. And the second is once you've actually hooked that cooter and he's chomped that walla in half, he's shaking and thrashing around, he sometimes throws the walla up the line. And you don't want that walla's teeth to actually touch or come anywhere near your fluorocarbon or your leader line. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take this hook which is our chin weight, go just underneath the chin party, straight through the top, through the bottom, sorry, and up to the top. There we go. So there it's lying, and you can see how nicely this chin weight actually lies on that uh, walla walla. We're then going to take our uh, wire and again easy way is to always remember that the welded side comes up and we're going to stick that because this part of the bait is not going to move we can keep it quite stiff we're going to move it up just ahead once we get there you just pull the head down and that treble goes nicely into the actual skin it's not going to move this part here, however, will move up and down as the actual walla is swimming. So lay it next to it. And you want to have a little bit of movement. You see at least a finger's length over there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring it all the way back, stick it into the actual walla, and forward. Okay. So there's a finger's length apart. We'll do exactly the same with this one. Give it a finger's length, which is perfect. We're going to move it back and in. There's your finger's length. And the reason we do that is because we want that movement. Can you see that? Look at that movement. That's what we are trying to achieve with a bait. So when it's moving and swimming in the water, it's doing this, and it's moving. OK, guys, that's basically what the Walla Walla is doing in the water as it's going. It's doing this. So you want that movement. We then take our cooter duster and we pull it down 
to the head <coughs> over there and that's the completed trace so I'm going to just hold it like that there's the bait as you can see our uh, chartreuse skirt hanging on it and of course as the wall is moving it's flexing backwards and forwards so that's the movement that you're going to be getting from your walla walla in the water down rig it chartreuse color which is ideal so like I said a two ounce you can put a sinker further up your line three meters four meters up the line six ounce whatever it is and down rig it straight below the actual uh, paddle ski ski boat or jet ski there we go guys it's as easy as that to make a walla walla trace for croc cooter there it is